Welcome to Rue's Musings. I am Becca Rue, bringing philosophical yoga inquiries to Colorado Springs and beyond. It's super important that I start this particular musing with this preface. Whatever works for you in your life and in your body, I fully, completely support. So I in no way think that I know what's great for everybody or that I have the right way. Let that be super clear. <sighs> that being said, I want to talk about a question that I get probably more than any other question when I'm out in the world and people find out that I have a yoga studio. The first question I get is, do you teach hot yoga? So I wanted to talk about hot yoga because that's how I started doing yoga is in a heated room. And I understand that there's hot yoga from Bikram, which is 26 specific postures in their um, fundamental series. And that's done in 104-ish degrees at, at about 80 humidity. This is my understanding. And then there's also a big influx of power yoga that's heated that's done about 94, 96 degrees, about 50 to 60% humidity. And this is what I first taught in for years, five years, and how I first practiced yoga. And there's many benefits to it. It is detoxifying, it's cleansing, it feels great. But what spawned this musing was my realization, and I'm curious for those of you who still practice hot yoga, if you would um, concur or deny this particular suspicion, that one of the reasons that it's so inviting that people keep going back and back and back and back to the heated room to practice their asana is because it transitions for you. Meaning, everything I've ever studied about meditation specifically says find a sacred space so that there's a specific space where you sit, that you wear a certain shawl and you wear certain mala beads and you light specific incense and through these practices it gets your body ready. Your body then knows, all of your senses know, it's time for meditation. So I moved in thinking that the hot room does that for you. And I know this from having practiced that, that if you're out in your day and it's not 96 degrees and it's not 60% humidity, you walk into that room and if you've done it for years, every part of you knows it's time for yoga now. So that the transition is taken care of for you. And I think this is probably really, really helpful for people. My concern about that is that then your yoga only happens when a 96 degree room is available and that people probably aren't practicing first thing in the morning. People aren't cultivating a home practice. People aren't practicing necessarily in the park because it feels totally different to practice in that heated room and to not and to practice in a normal room temperature. I also think with the vinyasa, the pose to pose to pose to pose, which I love because it feels so dancey and it's and you get lost in it and it's it is totally meditative. That at a point you can't learn the real intricate techniques of the poses and especially in just the hour format I don't know where it goes so I know of many of my friends who I love and adore and appreciate and know that they're completely committed to their yoga practice have been doing this one hour in the hot room vinyasa practice and um, I'm just nervous that the growth possibilities are being cut short because to work in that, that heated room, we can't work as hard as you can if you're really getting into alignment or deep breath techniques or um, philosophical questions. It's just this very unbelievably well packaged and feels phenomenal hour in this hot room. But I, I'm, I'm wondering if people are craving more because I craved more and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or raise any red flags, but I'm just curious if people are looking for other things or if this is if this is pretty much what we're signed on for is that is the hot yoga in the vinyasa flow for the 60 minutes because I have found that you go to that vinyasa power class where it's heated and you leave feeling euphoric it's like yeah I can take on the world I had the greatest thing that ever happened wow the nature helped me that was thunder <laughs> by the way so nature agrees that after leaving a hot room doing asana in a vinyasa style you feel awesome but about 90 minutes to two hours after the class, I always went back to feeling kind of how I did before I practiced. 
And with this more alignment focused, more technique focused style, where you have time in the poses to really mess around with your inner thighs and your inner armpits and your rib cage and the placement of your feet really specifically, you don't feel nearly as thunder booming euphoric when you leave the class but it stays. It's like 12 hours, 20 hours later that you feel this deep internal work. So I just want, I just want people to know that there are other things out there and that thing is great. I don't mean to diss on that thing, but to me, yoga is so much huger than that. And that's it. That's what, that's my offering. So let me know. I'm totally, I hope this spawns some conversation, even though I don't really want people mad at me, but if you are mad, I'll take it. Let's converse. Um, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.